Professor Tours, Hans Hansen, member of the Nobel Committee, please explain what is this year's prize about? This year's prize is about quantum mechanics and I'm sure you've heard of quantum mechanics and it usually is portrayed as something which is sort of very weird, very mystical. And it's true, there are weird and almost mystical aspects of it. But this year's prize is for work that has made clear what quantum mechanics really means. And the really sort of funny thing with quantum mechanics is that Normally, you think when you have, if you have sort of, say, billiard balls or something, you have one ball here, you have one ball there, you have one ball there. And you can look at this ball and you can say, is it red or yellow or white? And you can look at it and it's red, yellow and white. It has nothing to do with the other balls. And then you can look at one of the others and see, what color does that have? In quantum mechanics, it works differently. You can have quantum mechanical states which are called entangled. And then, when they are entangled, then you cannot just look at this one and say it's yellow without somehow affecting what is happening to the other one. This is a very, very strange property of quantum mechanics. And what this this year's prize laureates have done is to sort of and make us understand a bit better about what is going on, understand more about the nature, this peculiar feature of quantum mechanics. And how does it affect our daily lives or our lives? Well, that's a question you always get for the Nobel Prizes. <laughs> why not? <laughs> yes, why not? So, you know, if we, if we discover something about cosmos, what does it have to do with everyday life? Well, perhaps nothing, but it's still wonderful that we can understand these things. And one aspect of this prize is exactly that. We understand something about nature that we didn't understand or didn't understand properly before. And that is something which is, in the committee's you know, opinion, is price worthy in itself. Then come to applications, because there are certain prizes. One year there was a prize for, for blue, uh, blue diodes, directly of importance for the bulbs you put uh, in your socket. And there are aspects of this year's prize that have some practical implications. For instance, you can have something that is called quantum cryptography. That is a way to use entanglement, this funny property I told you about, to send secret messages in a way that cannot be intercepted, cannot be eavesdropped to. So that is one application that actually exists today. Those devices you can buy if they will become very important in the future, will it be only something for banks and, and uh, you know, <laughs> militaries? I don't know, but it is a practical application. Quantum computers might in the future, that's in the doing. Still we don't have a quantum computer, but who knows, huh? So why is this uh, recognized now? Why now? Uh, this the, all of the experiments, the first experiments came very early, you know. Still, the implications of the development that was set in motion hasn't been clear before much later. I would say it, within the last 10, 15, 20 years. And then, of course, it's always, you know, why this price this year that we never answer because there are of course many alternatives and this year this alternative came on top. You were a little late in um, and there are three laureates uh, yes. this year. Was there a problem finding them or? or? Uh, not, not so much actually. Could you tell us something personal about any of them? Is there something specifically interesting? Oh, you mean finding... The laureates. No, the laureates themselves as personalities. Uh, not really. I've listened to talks 
to them, but I don't know them personally. <laughs> yes, we heard Professor Zeilinger talk and he was really surprised and happy, yeah. of course. So, um, finally, if you could tell me in 30 seconds why you specifically are so excited by this prize, what would you say? Well, quantum mechanics is an old love of mine. The, I wanted to become a mathematician. When I took a course in quantum mechanics, I decided to become a physicist. So quantum mechanics is the thing that made me study physics, and I think I'm not the only physicist to have that experience. And the quantum world itself? That is something that you never get finished with. You always ponder, what is it? How do you understand it? and you try to go deeper and deeper into it. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Thor Hans Hansson, member of the Nobel Committee. Thank you. Okay.